maestro, Norman Gamboa of the Sonoma County Philharmonic. We were talking a little bit before the segment started about whether you use the, uh, use the moniker maestro. Too heavy handed or uh, I think it's cool, but. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's kind of a, a title of respect, I will say, yeah. but it's mostly used in, it's an old fashioned kind of way to refer to the conductor. Nowadays, we're trying to be a little bit more approachable and I think that the uh, maestro title uh, sets a little bit a distance between what we're trying to really accomplish. So I personally uh, try not to use it as much. So I should probably lay off on the maestro? You can use maestro. it whatever you <laughs> feel more comfortable with. I mean, it's, a good, it's a good Starbucks name when you go to order a coffee and they, you know, they ask you for a name, you can say maestro. I mean, you know. <laughs> Well, I'd never thought of that. That could be a good use for it. There you absolutely. Go. So you work with um, you've worked with a number of orchestras, but if you could walk me through what defines the Sonoma County Philharmonic, what is a philharmonic versus uh, you know symphony orchestra? Well, you know those are uh, archaic um, terms that are really just used okay. ex exchangeably nowadays. They really don't mean anything in particular. Back in the day, in the 1800s or before that, uh, a philharmonic referred more to a society. Okay. So that's why, for instance, we have the New York Philharmonic, uh, okay. which originally was founded as a society, or the Vienna Philharmonic. They're, they're, they're clubs, oh, that's per se. And then the, symf the symphony orchestra, it's the group that derives from that society. Oh, okay. Um, right. But, you know, as time went on, those, those terms really got we can say mis misuse or in inexchangeable, right. and now we just use them as mere labels. Right. And then so Sonoma County Philharmonic, that is a volunteer orchestra. So these are professionals who have decided to bring their talents and coalesce together a as a group. Yes. And, you know, as a matter of fact, it's a very unique orchestra because um, it plays at a professional level. I yeah. do two other orchestras that... Um, do not compare to the level that the Sonoma County Philharmonic has. And like you say, it's all volunteers, people that have day jobs like anyone else, and somehow along their lives they had a formal musical training, right. and they decided to put these skills to use and form this, this very unique, very wonderful group that we have here. Yeah, and I've seen it, and it's, and it's amazing. I've heard it, certainly. Thank right. you again for tickets. Oh, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, and it started in Katati. Of all things, because it's a college town. I mean, what? well, you know, I, I'm not quite uh, in, well informed in terms yeah, of you're the new the, that far yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in the history of the orchestra. But yes, it was founded in Katari as a summer orchestra. They yeah. used to play at the at the park, and the idea just kind of took off after that. And from then, it was renamed the American Philharmonic of Sonoma County which was the idea of my predecessor, who was also the founder of the orchestra, to create this uh, organization of orchestras across the United States, and each of them was going to be the American Philharmonic of oh, I see. such place. Like a college, like exactly. uh, California State or whatever. Um, yeah. Yes, but unfortunately, you know, times changed. We, ha we had that economic backlash with right. the, uh, in the country, so a lot of these things play a role in the project not really taking off as it was yeah. first intended. Uh, so we were anything in the arts, really. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we ended up with just the Sonoma County uh, branch of this idea. And later, when he stepped down, uh, we thought, and I came in, of course, we thought we needed to be more uh, in touch with the region that we are involved. Right and therefore it's the Sonoma County. So now you serve wine. So we, <laughs> we will, actually we have very, a very popular wine raffle at every concert. So, sure so, we, so yes, we're still very much affiliated with <laughs> the wine country. <laughs> so, so for our viewers who aren't clear on the concept, what is conducting besides what they think it is? You know? Right, well yeah. what people see actually, they're mostly numbers. What a conductor gives to the orchestra are a lot of numbers. Oh, so that tells you that when, you know, when kids are in school, Right. Mathematics play a big role in music, um, so we give a lot of numbers because music—it's all basically—is a language of numbers. Right. Um, the 
the role of a conductor basically is to take all the different ideas on how the music needs, needs to be interpreted and as bring written. It, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So because you know you have in the Philharmonic we have about 62 musicians. Wow. Each of them is going to have an idea of how this or that piece has to be interpreted. So the job of the conductor is basically take all those concepts and yeah. bring them into one and say this is the way it goes because this is how <laughs> I see yeah. the, the interpretation. That doesn't mean it's a dictatorship. Right. It's just a, a, ma a matter of conveying all those concepts into one and make it a, uh, just one interpretation. And then you, I mean, for lack of a better term, you have to have a vision. You have to, I mean, every, you, you hear recordings of pieces and they're often distinct from one another mm -hmm. in terms of their interpretation. Right. When you're dealing with all the ideas that the musicians themselves are bringing to the piece, and you're, you're bringing your own concept, it's a, it, it, it's like directing a film. It sounds like you know you've got existing elements, existing talents, but you have to coalesce it into into a whole, into one thing. That is correct, okay. and you know, for a conductor, it's very rewarding because back then when I was an instrumentalist, I only made music with one instrument. For, right. for me now, I Ooh, just, yeah. I used to play trombone. Trombone, yeah. Um, cool. Now, <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> this one. So now I, I say that I make, I make music with all instruments, right. which is a different experience. And uh, it takes a lot of preparation. I normally take time to study the background of the composer, background of right. the piece, the time when it was written, you know, if you're doing something by a Russian composer, Shostakovich, you have that entire regime that played a role in that, in those compositions, for right. instance. Or this uh, this weekend, we're doing an all-American program with the, um, with the Sonoma County Philharmonic, and one of those pieces is Porgy and Bess, selections oh, from Porgy and Bess. So you know, it's a radical work because it was composed at the time where race. Uh, yeah. played a major role in history in the United States. So I have to look at all those factors that played an important part in how the composer thought of the music. Along with that, I have to kind of know what each instrument is going to do or is doing. So there's, it's a lot of uh, little pieces that come into play when it comes to you know, conducting an orchestra, and it's not just implement simply being in front <laughs> and yeah. and you know moving my arms. Yeah, what, what we see is the result exactly. of a lot of work. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. We're with conductor Norman Gamboa from Sonoma County Philharmonic, and we'll be back in a second. <laughs> And we're back with Norman Gamboa. He's the conductor of the Sonoma County Philharmonic. Uh, we're t talking about what a conductor actually does. And uh, it, it, thanks for walking me through that. But how does one become a conductor? It's not like the most obvious career choice. And yet, you know, you've, you've worked with several orchestras throughout your career. And you work with at least three right now. Right. And you fly all over the United States. <laughs> I do, yes. It's, it's pretty amazing. But how did you go? F how, you started in Costa Rica. How do you go from Costa Rica to conducting locally and in Colorado? And where else do you conduct right now? Uh, in Wyoming. Wyoming, yes. right? Huh? I mean, well, uh, well, every conductor starts as instrumentalist. As a matter of fact, there are only maybe one or two schools in the United States that will offer conducting as an undergraduate degree. Right. You first have to specialize in an instrument. And then once you move on to a master's program, then you have the opportunity to right. go into conducting. But 
I mean, I started music when I was 10 years old, so it's been quite a while now. Yeah. And, and this is in Costa Rica? In Costa Rica, yes. At, and, and trombone was your first instrument? Or? Well, actually, it's called euphonium. It's like oh. a small tuba that I used to play. Okay. I started playing trombone mostly when I came to the United States. Yeah. Um, but from what my parents tell me, because I'm not quite sure if I recall very well, but they, I guess I built a box and I used to move my arms when I was 10 years old with a little stick <laughs> to my mother's records. Oh, wow. So, and I kind of have a vague I idea of that <laughs> I, of doing this. Which were, is, were your parents musicians? No, I'm actually the, the first one in the family that, now I have another cousin who's also a singer, but, yeah. but I started the trend and um, so you go through a training as an instrumentalist and yeah. then once you you reach certain level and you feel like that's something that you like to do because uh, you know it takes a lot conducting is not just the music part of it right um, I will say it for a typical conductor yeah. what you do with an orchestra it's probably 65 to 75 percent is the administrative part of the music and oh, then right. the 25 percent that you do is music related so oh, wow. <laughs> so if you're if you know if a musician is prepared to deal with that uh, that is not as the let's call it glamorous side of or the, the most visual part of the profession yeah then you're more than welcome to follow your dream and I always thought conducting it's it's very interesting the fact that you get to do music but at the same time you're not making music is really the baton yeah, that is it doesn't make yeah. any sound. Yeah. It's you know what the the influence you have over the musician that creates that sound. So it's it's a very ethereal kind of profession, but I always found it fascinating. So when I finished my undergraduate at Baylor University in Texas, uh, so when, when did you get to? So you you went from Costa Rica to Texas, or uh, well, yeah, that's in a nutshell. Yes, okay. um, <laughs> when I finish, I finish my musical studies in Costa Rica up to the bachelor's degree. Uh, at the time, the, the system for credit, college credit was right. different, so I had to pretty much start over when I got to the United States. So I, I attended a couple of colleges in New York, in the right. New York area, and then I transferred to Baylor where I finished my undergraduate in performance. What, what was the appeal there? I mean, like if, you, if you're already establishing yourself in Costa Rica, why did you want to come here? Well, it was very simple. No, I came to a music festival up in Albany, in New York, yeah. and first time in America, or, or uh, it was yeah. The yeah. one time I had been before was to buy an instrument, so okay. it really was not. Yeah, it was not in the plans. Uh, so I was at this festival, and I was offered um, by the director of the festival. She came and asked me, "Have you ever thought about studying in the United States?" I said, "Yes, but I can't afford it. It's too expensive." Wow. The next day, she said, "It's all taken care of. You have a scholarship." Were you, so, were you that virtuosic a player that she could? I guess like I guess <laughs> she saw something in me that maybe I was not quite aware of. Because that's a huge break to have somebody just come out of the blue and say, "Here's a life path for you," exactly. and it's paid for. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So I feel very fortunate yeah. that that happened. Um, of course, uh, then I called my parents and said, "I'm I'm staying, I'm <laughs> coming back." So after that, you know. Opportunities starting to appear, and that's when I went to Baylor and yeah. finished there. And as I was finishing, the idea of conducting stayed in the back of my mind the whole time. So one of my, and I will say who really is my mentor, Stephen Hyde, who's the okay. orchestra director at Baylor, he encouraged me to look really into it and, and pursue it. So I went after that, I went to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, because they, at the time the orchestra director there was a former student, student of his. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to continue with that line of training. And, and it seems like academia and the arts, especially in, in music at this level, are definitely intertwined. It seems like mm -hmm. th there's a, a, a conversation that never really ends. So. Exactly. And I, I tell you, at this point, uh, you know, I've, I'm finished. I have a doctorate degree and all that. But I still call my first mentor, Stephen Hyde, every time I have a question of, about something that I'm not too certain how to, to go about. Yeah. So it's a connection that you never lose, and yeah. it's very interesting how that it's kept. So, so yeah, it, it seems like that's been sort of the tradition for music going back a millennia. I where, think so. Yes. Yeah, you know, there's sort of a master and tutor kind of I situation. I think so. There yeah. have been stories that I've read and I mean I've heard of 
of, for example, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, nowadays when they, the conductor says, you know, my interpretation comes from this person who studied with this person who studied with this person, who was a study uh, or understudy of the composer of this work. Right. So you have that, well, uh, how you call that? Uh, Sort of train of, of like, like sort of the, the lineage, yes. Yeah, lineage, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a, a mentee yourself, or you, do you find yourself in a place where you're mentoring others now? Well, I did teach for a while at, at a college in Kansas, so I, I have one student, or former student, who's now finishing his doctorate degree in, in um, North Carolina, I believe. So uh, he every now and then uh, yeah. calls me or talks to me, and I try to, since I'm not really in the academic field right now, right. Um, I don't have a mentee per se, but you know, if, if young composers, I mean, excuse me, conductors, um, I want to get some feedback or, or, or any kind of uh, advice, I'm always open I mean, to that. What are these conversations like? I mean, do you, do you call your mentor in the middle of the night, like, okay, <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, I mean how, what kind of questions, I mean? Well, for me, particularly, I'm not a string player, so okay. uh, I did take several courses in college about strings technique, okay. but still, I'm not a specialist, per se. You took string theory, but it turns out it was quantum physics. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it actually feels like that at times. But, um, so, my former teacher, he's a violinist, or yeah. he was a violinist. So, every time I have a question on, you know, because one of the things the conductor is responsible for along with the concertmaster, which is the principal violinist in the orchestra, is to make sure that all the strings have indicated in their parts how the bow has to go, if it has to go up or it has to go down, right. or if, you know, so they all match. And since that, that's not my area, I always try to get advice from him just to make sure that you know <laughs> I'm doing the right thing. So there's always this uh, play that uh, takes place. That's great. We're with Norman Gamboa, the conductor of the Sonoma County Philharmonic, and we'll be right back. <laughs> back with conductor Norman Gamboa from the Sonoma County Philharmonic. I'm not going to call you maestro, I know that's the... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking a little bit uh, during the break about uh, audiences and, and, and keeping an audience uh, for classical music and, and the kind of music that you conduct. And it's interesting because there's, there's keeping an audience and there's also keeping you know, uh, enough work that uh, uh, everyone can participate in this together. Who are the audiences these days? Well, you know, it's, it's very eclectic, I will say. Um, you know, orchestras are now switching their focus in terms of repertoire a little bit away from the traditional. Right. Just right. because, you know, the, the audience that used to favor lots of Beethoven, lots of Brahms, lots of uh, the, the Mozart. Right, right. Yeah, the big ones. Um, well, these, these, these kinds of audiences, you know, they're, we're, we're all aging, so they're aging, right. and we're trying to reach also to the new generations. Right. And because they didn't grow up in, in a, an environment that, that nurtured this kind of repertoire, it's a little bit more modern, uh, we're also having to, you know, do more research in terms of what is appealing nowadays. Yeah, you see a lot of like hybrid programs happening. Like exactly. the, uh, there'll be uh, like movie soundtracks, for example. They'll do like a whole night of John Williams, Star mm -hmm. Wars, or that kind of thing. Right. There's, there's a guy I used to live near in Oakland named uh, Mason Bates who does uh, essentially electronica and and classical music, sort of in or classical instrumentation at least right. in this sort of whole new concept. Um, 
it, that doesn't strike me as the kind of thing that Sonoma, Sonoma County Philharmonic is doing, but I know that you have a proclivity for new composers a lot, and you bring a lot of new work that has probably never been heard here to, uh, to local audiences. Right. Uh, you know, with this Sonoma County Philharmonic, we, we're experiencing a shift, I will say, in terms of audience. Um, we're trying to explore as many different avenues as possible because uh, we've had audience members who have came to me and said, you keep playing the same all. Right. And so we're trying to cater to this it, but these that's, people. that's good that you have an audience that's engaged enough that they want you to reach out. Oh, yes. Reach out uh, and, I yeah. will say our audience members, they are very, very uh, involved with what we do, which is something I truly appreciate. Uh, yeah. So in the, sa in the same way, we have this, this lady uh, saying that we're always playing the same old things. Uh, we had another audience uh, member this last year saying, you're not playing enough of the classics. <laughs> so we're trying to balance. And then the third factor that comes into place with the Sonoma County Philharmonic especially is that since our musicians are volunteers, I also have to keep in mind the repertoire they would like to play. Right. Not just right. what the audience wants to hear, but what they will keep them entertained and they will feel challenged Right, because by. they're not doing this for money, they're doing this because they exactly. enjoy playing together. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, a difference with the with any professional orchestra, Santa Rosa Symphony, San Francisco Symphony, for instance, is their job. So right. whether they like the music or not is beyond the point. Uh, with a community orchestra or volunteer orchestra, what the musician does on stage and how comfortable or or pleased right. he or she feels about it, it's very important. So it's it's a very delicate balance and you know I always take input from musicians okay what do you like to play what and are you they guys interested me, in now yeah. Yeah. yeah and they give me a huge list of pieces they would like to do and then I take that and think of what the audience would like to do for instance this year what we decided was to do a uh, world tour so we started That's with music from Latin America right uh, now we're going to United States composers and literally going around the exactly world, yeah. the next program will be um, German, and the final one is uh, Spanish. That's great. So we're trying to go around and see. Uh, it's a nice spin on the world tour. Exactly, and yeah, yeah. see if you know we can cater to as many people as we can. And in addition, you know, we we're going on a second year partnership with the Santa Rosa Dance Theater. So we oh, wow. we're the only ballet company in the North Bay that produces the cask the, the Nutcracker. With right. a live orchestra, with live, yeah, which is so that's yeah. that's very incredible. And if you ask any of the dancers, it's a completely different feel because they not only hear the music now, but the orchestra produces vibrations they while we're in the yeah. pit, and they can feel that while they're dancing. So it's a completely different experience, and the audience also gets that 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 uh, vibration of the music, and you know, in combination with the dancers. So it's a very unique. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. And you know, we're talking about how you have a volunteer orchestra, and it's not their, you know, it's not their jobs, and so you like, you know, specifically their job, and so you, you help make it entertaining for them. Um, but this is your job, and you, ha and you have put together uh, enough of these uh, uh, professional sort of uh, landmarks that you travel the country uh, uh, conducting. I mean, you do, you do our, our local uh, orchestra, you do Wyoming, you do Colorado, you're going to Panama, as I understand? Yes, on uh, Monday I leave for Panama because I'm with the National Symphony. And you just got back yesterday from Colorado, I mean this never, yes. yeah. How many air miles do you have? I don't even know, <laughs> to be honest with you, but I do, it, it's, a, it's a hectic schedule, I, I, so far I'm enjoying it, yeah. um, but it takes a lot of uh, careful planning because, you know, I cannot double book myself right so I do I do have three uh, permanent jobs which is you know the Sonoma County Philharmonic I do the Aurora Symphony which is in the Denver metro area and then I do the Orchestra in Gillette Wyoming which is the yeah. Powder River Symphony do they know you're moonlighting or, or <laughs> like they must know that you you have other responsibilities like you're oh yes, yeah, absolutely, okay. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you don't pretend yeah I'll be there in 10, 10 minutes so, yeah. <laughs> no that doesn't happen anymore um, I get booked um, and I, on top of those three, like I said, I'm, on Monday I'm going to Panama. Um, I get asked by other orchestras in other countries to guest conduct every now and then. So, for instance, right now I'm booked two years in advance so I can plan my schedule 
accordingly and you that's know, amazing that's great to be in demand say. though like that i mean that's affirming. it is fun yes yeah. it is fun but um it's a little stressful too but it you know it's the fact that i get to deal with and uh, uh, interact with people of different backgrounds you know the uh, widest spectrum or more contrasting i will say yeah. it's you know having to deal or, or interact with the california audiences versus wyoming audiences right. you know, it's completely different mindsets and and it's it's you know what we program here for the orchestra it, there are b big chances it's not going to work in wyoming and vice versa yeah colorado i think is kind of sandwiched in the middle <laughs> right. so so and because it's a it's a big metro area um it's a little bit more uh, right. var variety that we can find and in, in, in terms of variety What's the future for Sonoma County uh, Philharmonic? What do you what do you what do you have in mind uh, for the? Well, we're we're trying to reach out to the community, you know, because we are the 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 county's orchestra mm -hmm. per se. Um, we're trying to make everybody more inclusive. And um, uh, but do you do you do that programmatically by what you select or? Uh, we're trying right now through partnerships. Like I said, we're working right. with the ballet company. Um, this year, we started the children's programs in a different fashion than, you know, for instance, the Santa Rosa Symphony does it. We're right. working with, uh, as a, what is it called, the Community Action Partnership of Sonoma County right. through their affiliates. One of them, which is our biggest uh, uh, liaison, is uh, uh, Via Esperanza. Centro de Educación. Right. So we're trying to reach out to the underserved part of the community, which a lot of the times are the Hispanic community. Right. Right. And we just did a concert for for children's, and 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 it was all free, and we we premier we perform music uh, from by Hispanic composers, and and it was very interactive. It, everything was bilingual, so we presented. Well, well the music great. is going to sound the same right. no matter what language. <laughs> But the presentation itself was bilingual. We had uh, one of the city officials who's uh, Spanish, right, uh, Efren right. Carrillo, yeah. do the Spanish narration. And then we had an, another friend from KBBF radio to do the English narration. And so it was, it was a fantastic, fantastic experience for the kids That's and great. for us as well. So we're trying to work as much as we can with the community to reach out and, and it's not only a matter of projecting the orchestra out to the community, but trying to educate the new generation, especially this these underserved or uh, right. kids, bring them in. Yeah, to to show them that you know the cultural arts is nothing is that is foreign, that is yeah. here for them exactly. Yeah, that's great, man. Hey, Norman Gamboa, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having the me. County Philharmonic, uh, come back. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Come back. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, be great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you.